Welcome to Rock the Boat with Richard Hagen, your weekly dose of international boating, super yachting and maritime industry news and opinions. Hugely popular US boat builder Boston Whaler has unveiled a limited edition model, the new Boston Whaler 420 Outrage Anniversary Edition. This boat is a special edition of the company's standard Boston Whaler Outrage. This special model has been introduced in celebration of 50 years of production of the Outrage. A production run that long for a boat like this is basically unheard of in this industry, so let's dig into this new special edition model and find out what makes this boat so enduringly popular with boaters. Boston Whaler is an iconic American boat builder with a long history of building some of the toughest recreational fishing boats in the industry. The company was established in 1956 by a chap named Dick Fisher, which is not at all coincidental. He conducted a famous marketing stunt to prove his marketing claim that his boats were unsinkable. While out on the water, he sawed a Boston Whaler in half and an impressive sight for the time, both halves of the boat remained afloat. He then tied the bow section to the stern section and towed the bow section back into shore. The unsinkable moniker stuck and has remained in place to this day. Sadly, despite some revolutionary boat design ideas and very clever marketing, he was unable to turn the brand into a significant success and he later sold it off to another company in 1969. That sale would be the first of several until the brand was finally bought in 1996 by US marine industry giant Brunswick Corporation for a bargain price. Ever since then, the brand has gone from strength to strength. Brunswick retained the brand's original best-selling boat, called the Montauk, and gradually expanded the range with regular new model launches up until the 420 Outrage, which is currently the biggest boat offered by Boston Whaler. The Outrage range of boats is marketed based on their reputation for safety and solid high-tech engineering, as well as for their onboard facilities and their fishing heritage. The standard version of the 420 Outrage offers seating for up to 20 20 people, which is really a lot. Starting from the helm, there are three individually bolstered seats and behind those a bench seat for three more people. In the bow, there's additional seating in the nose for four or five people around a height adjustable table. There's a large sun lounge in front of the helm that can easily seat three adults. Going back to the helm position, there are three 16-inch Raymarine multifunction displays. Below deck, there's a fantastic cabin with a large double bed forward and an additional pull-out bed in the bench seat to port. The cabin also features a separate heads compartment with full height standing room and a handheld shower. There's a small galley to starboard with basic facilities. Those are all the specs available with the regular 420 Outrage, so the question then is, what's different with the Anniversary Edition? The answer to that is, it's mainly in the details and colors. The most noticeable visual details detail for this version of the boat is that it sports teak accents throughout the deck and seating, particularly the large teak seat backs. The upholstery is all new and only comes in the sea grey colour scheme. The stitching on the upholstery is also special to this version of the boat. The steel frame for the hard top is powder coated in black and the cabin features darker colours to make it quote more appealing unquote. The big news for this edition however is in the outboard engines. The 420 Outrage Anniversary Edition is powered by Mercury's range topping brand new 600 horsepower V12 Verados. These outboards are currently the fastest in the world and are quite a feat of engineering. I featured an in-depth discussion of them in episode 1 so if you'd like to know more about them please do go check that episode out. Boston Whaler offers this setup with Mercury's joystick piloting meaning that the boat can be controlled completely using a small joystick at the helm. That's particularly useful for maneuvering the boat in tight spaces, but it also offers features like Mercury's Skyhook technology, which virtually anchors the boat in a particular position using only controlled thrusts from the outboards rather than deploying a physical anchor. There's also a Seakeeper gyroscopic stabilizer to keep the boat nice and stable and hopefully prevent some seasickness. For fishing enthusiasts, the 420 Outrage is described as quite a hardcore offshore fishing platform, unquote. The boat has a 160 litre insulated live well, a freshwater sink, tackle drawers, a solid surface countertop and a fridge. There's even a special refrigeration system called Frostbox to keep your catch fresh or even just your beers cold. And if all you want is to take a swim, 
there's a side access door on the port side to make it easy. Lucky buyers of the new 420 Outrage Anniversary Edition will receive some exclusive gifts to mark the occasion. These include a custom helm pad, some unreleased artwork, a letter of authenticity and a coffee table book detailing the history of the Outrage model range. Boston Whaler is taking the boat on a series of tour events that it's calling the Homecoming Tour along the East Coast, starting this month and running till October where it will end at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show. In the meantime, check out bostonwhaler.com for all the info about this beautiful new model. Italian luxury yacht builder Riva has unveiled the facelifted 56 Rival hardtop, for which we only have this one short video. The Rival 56 hardtop is an evolution of the existing Rival 56, and in case you didn't already guess the obvious, I'll just tell you that the main change is that it now has a hardtop over the cockpit. There, that's all I know about it, because even the Riva website hasn't been updated yet to fully reflect whether there's anything else I should know about this version of the boat. Meanwhile, in case you've never heard of Riva, they're basically the Rolls Royce of the European boating industry. They build extremely luxurious, extremely customizable, and extremely expensive boats. The company is probably the most famous for their Riva Aqua Riva boats, which are small classic speed boats that were popularized decades ago by the rich and famous, zipping around the French Riviera and similar locations. If you've ever seen an old movie with some rich guy or maybe even a villain riding along the beaches of the Med in a polished wooden speedboat, chances are it was an Aqua Riva. Anyway, to learn more about the non-hardtop version of the Rival 56, visit riva-yacht.com. Florida-based wakeboat builder Nautique has announced a completely new model in their lineup, the Super Air Nautique S23. The highlight of the new boat is the design of the hull at the bow. From the side, you may notice that it's very vertical in shape and very tall. That's unusual for these kinds of boats, which normally have shallow, more aggressive bow profiles. Nautique says that the deep V entry angle and the tall freeboard, which is jargon for the sides, of the S23's bow allow for a clean, drier ride on choppier water, but apparently it also plays a role in helping the hull create better wakeboard waves and waves more suitable for all ages and abilities. Speaking of wakes, the S23 is all about creating that perfect wake for the best possible time on the water. The helm is like the control room for the wake creation power plant. It features a large screen that gives the skipper full control over all of the boat's features, including the sound system, the lighting, the engine, and a bunch of other things, but the most important important one of all is the wake adjustment screen. Here the driver can make real-time adjustments to the wave behind the boat until it's the perfect profile for your rider. The equipment making all of that happen sits at the stern and it's extremely impressive to say the least. Starting on deck there are transom storage lockers each with integrated ballast bags. These can be filled or emptied using the built-in software at the helm to get the boat the perfect weight to generate the perfect wake. When the ballast is empty you gain dry storage for all your water sports gear. Underneath the swim platform there's a stern drive engine with a rudder. On either side of the hull are what they call actuators that cut into the water on either side of the hull, changing the shape of the wake immediately to suit your preferences. Another important component is what they call the NCRS or Nautique Configurable Running Surface. These are basically large trim tabs which Nautique says can help the boat get up on plane faster, especially if the ballast is full. That's important for when you're towing a rider. Once you're up on the plane, the NCRS plays a role in customizing the wake to your preference based on your inputs to the surf computer at the helm. And finally, it helps the boat to execute tighter turns while keeping the nose down, even under heavy loads. The company also offers an option called the Nautique Integrated Steer Assist, which acts as a stern thruster and allows the boat to be controlled via a joystick while executing tight maneuvers. Finally, a standard feature is what they call the Nautique Surf Pipe, which is really just an exhaust pipe that exits below the waterline and directly into the propeller wash. Supposedly, the additional bubbles generated by those emissions help to improve the surf experience. There are a whole bunch of quality of life features on deck that I don't have time to get through here, but one I do want to mention is the options available for the tower. The tower is available in one of three versions. The standard option is a manual 
fold down tower. Option two adds hydraulic actuation to the fold down action and that's activated by a button press. I suspect that option three will be the most popular one. This one gives you a telescoping tower which allows the tower to lower down and raise back up in order to clear under bridges for example without the need for anyone to even leave their seat. The telescoping tower is further enhanced by the addition of two rubberized rotating board racks and two pairs of JL Audio full range speakers. Unfortunately that's about all I have time for in this piece but if you'd like to learn more about the new Super Air Nautique S23 please do visit nautique.com or better yet check out their YouTube channel. Well that's it for this week's episode, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And if you didn't know, when I'm not researching, writing and producing these videos, I pay the bills as a marketing copywriter. I've got a passion for the boating and marine industry in general, and I would love to hear from you the next time you need anything written up. Talk to me for competitive rates on everything from blogs to email marketing, product descriptions and even video scripts. I'm easy to find too. Please reach out to me on either LinkedIn or via my website with all the details in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.